Hi, everyone. Um, just getting started here, clicking all the buttons I need to click. Um, and let's make sure we're recording and streaming. Um, awesome. Well, while we're waiting for everyone to join the room slash event, um, Tell me where you're tuning in from, as always, if you've been here before, because I'd love to know where you are and what your favorite sauce is for seafood. Um, I'm Kat. I'm hosting the event today, and I'm in Long Island, New York. My favorite sauce for seafood, I pretty much make this, I don't know, once every couple of weeks, uh, chimichurri. So it's actually like an Argentinian sauce that you would serve with steak but I love it with fish um it's awesome with grilled halibut let me drop a link in the chat for chimichurri um like I'm still in an herby very herby mood so um it's a it's a good one for even something like salmon um but if you've never had it before I highly recommend all right so there's like a link for halibut steak with chimichurri in the chat, but that's my favorite sauce. Tell me what your favorite sauce is and where you're tuning in from if you want to share. All right, we're just going to wait a few minutes for folks to join us. Um, and let's see, I'll probably wait a couple more minutes here um, in case there are any latecomers. Um, don't be shy. I want to know what sauce you're cooking seafood with. <laughs> uh, we're also going to be making a sauce today, which um, is a really a fun one, a fun and easy one. Um, yeah, dill sauce is great, especially with salmon. Um, but I, I like a, we have a nice, actually a creamy dill sauce up on the blog. Let's see if I can pull it up here really quickly and drop it in the link too. Um, yeah, a creamy dill sauce is actually really, really quick to make and um, always a winner. Oh, here we go. Dill sauce for salmon. The recipe says dill sauce for salmon, but you can really have it with anything. Um, all right, so I'm giving you a couple sauce options in the chat. Um, ooh, yogurt lemon sauce, that's a good one too. Hi, Vicki. Um, yeah. Seasonings is good. Yeah, halibut. I mean, halibut doesn't need a sauce, but I love it with a sauce because it's just so, you know, meaty on its own that I think it holds up really nicely to anything. Um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Oh yeah, tartar sauce. That's always a good one, especially for fish sticks. We are not making tartar sauce today, but we're, we'll make something else fun. Um, let's get started with the event because I think everyone is trickling in or has trickled in. So um, hi, I'm Kat. I'm here from the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. And today I'm going to show you how to make crispy salmon fish sticks or salmon fingers. Feels weird to say salmon fingers because they have fins, but you know, I guess chickens don't have fingers either. So um, crispy salmon fish sticks, uh, along with a really fun dipping sauce um, that you can make with probably some things you have in your um, pantry and fridge. If not, tartar is always a good option. Um, before we get to the recipe, just some housekeeping as always, if you would like to follow along with captions, you can, uh, if you're on the Zoom window, you can follow along. Um, there's a captions button at the bottom of your screen. It might be hidden under a button that says more with three dots, but feel free to turn that on if you like. Um, and it, during the event, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those questions in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, not the chat button. Q&A is easier for us to find and field um, because I am going to be joined by a couple of people moderating the team. I'll have them say hi here in just a moment. Lastly, if you need to leave before today's event is over, don't worry do your thing. Uh, we're going to send a link over in the next day or so um, in your inbox, but you can also watch this event immediately after it's over um, on the Facebook Wild Alaskan Company homepage. Um, it's streaming there live now. Um, so yeah, it'll be available pretty much immediately afterward. So if uh, you want to drop a link um, in the chat synonym for our Facebook homepage, that would be great. Um, also, yes, uh, if the moderators, my teammates, my colleagues want to come onto the camera just to say hi, 
and wave hello. Um, I've got a few of my um, my buddies here uh, to help me out. They're going to be answering your questions today or giving me the tough questions to answer for you, um, hopefully not to stump me. So um, thanks for being with me again, everybody, team and um, members. So, um, all right. Hello and goodbye. Um, what we're learning to make today or what we're making today is crispy salmon fish sticks. Um, so basically we're going to coat strips of salmon or pieces of salmon with panko breadcrumbs. Um, panko breadcrumbs are just a very like coarse style of breadcrumb that you should be able to find at any grocery store. Um, so crispy salmon fish sticks are more like a grown up version of chicken tenders or maybe, you know, on the flip side, they're like a kid's menu version version of wild salmon. So either way you look at it, I think they're really fun to make and eat, um, no matter how old you are. So um, I'm going to be making these in an air fryer so that they get crispy and golden. But I will also pan fry a version um, just on the stovetop, uh, just to show you how adaptable this recipe is. Um, and for that, I'm going to be using a piece of ling cod, which is a current member special that we have. Um, so uh, let's see, which thing do I want to talk about first? Well, okay, so ling cod. It's an exclusive member special that's available right now uh, on the member homepage. I am a big fan of using ling cod for fish sticks. If you're not familiar with it, it's a white fish. It's a good balance of delicate and firm. So it made, makes a really nice like elevated fish stick. Um, it's actually one of the first recipes I think I have with it. So um, I'll tell you a little more about ling cod later if you're not familiar with it. It's a white fish, uh, flaky, delicate, firm the perfect balance. Um, so the link for that special is in the chat. Um, definitely don't miss out. Link cod's awesome. So um, going back to the theme of today's event, why fish sticks? Well, why not just buy frozen pre-made ones? I can give you a million reasons why you should be making these at home. Um, but the short answer is that homemade ones are just better um, for so many reasons. Um, making these is also a really good way to flex your home chef skills. Um, once you nail a basic skill like breading fish, uh, you can start playing around with different types of breading, even ones that don't use bread. I'm using the word bread sort of generally. Um, I saw someone mention something about uh, coconut in the chat. I'll get to that later. Um, so different types of breading, and you can even experiment with different cooking methods, you know, air fryer, stovetop, baking. Baking never gets anything quite as crispy, but still a good option if you want to do like a big batch of things. Um, so yeah, um, maybe you've breaded something before, maybe you haven't. Um, but if you haven't breaded something before, you're going to learn something today. If you have breaded something today or before, maybe you just haven't made fish sticks. So hopefully it's a win-win for everybody. So um, let me get started. We're going to start with sockeye salmon, salmon fingers or salmon sticks or fish sticks, however you want to call them, crispy salmon bites. Um, the what I have in front of me right now, um, I actually just have two pieces of fish. Uh, if let me see, Sonata, can you actually spotlight the overhead camera for me so that people can see what is going on? And if you're in the chat, can you see this other camera where it's like an overhead shot of fish? I just want to make sure everyone's seeing what uh, what I'm looking yes. at. Yes, we can see it. Amazing. Okay, great. So I've got some sockeye salmon right here. Um, it is skin on, and I'm just going to leave that skin on when I make the, the fish sticks. And I've also got ling cod here. We're going to get to that piece later, but um, I just have these on a kitchen towel, a clean kitchen towel that I use to pat fish dry. You can use paper towels. You don't need to use, um, you know, a reusable towel like I do. Um, totally up to you. So to turn this salmon into fish sticks, um, first thing I'm going to do is get it on the cutting board here. I'm going to cut it into like a few different, maybe three or four pieces should be good. Um, if your knife is not super sharp, like this one, like this one isn't super sharp. You're just gonna have to get through that skin on the bottom. It can be a little hard to cut through. So I'm making four little fish sticks here. I cut them, you know, this way 
on the fillet. You can cut them this way. Doesn't really matter. Um, I think that they stay together a little better if you cut them um, against the grain like this, or is that with the grain? I don't know. I'm not really sure which way because it's it's one way or the other. You'll be happy no matter what. Um, and then what I'm going to do with this is just a basic dredging process. Um, so let me just bring up my ingredient list here so I can read these off to you. Uh, what you'll need is some flour. Um, got a little plate of flour here, a whisked egg. And in this case, I'm gonna be breading the fish in panko breadcrumbs. Um, the recipe that's linked for this actually uses like, like a buttery cracker crust. That's totally fine too. This is sort of where you can mix and match um, what kind of ingredients you're using here. But as long as you as long as you have some sort of flour type of ingredient, doesn't have to be wheat flour, egg, and then um, a crispy, you know, crusty thing, you'll be really happy. So um, first thing that I like to do. Oh, actually, one thing I do want to note. Um, I'm going to be cooking the sockeye fish sticks in an air fryer. Wild sockeye cooks really quickly, so I actually like to use pre-toasted panko breadcrumbs beforehand. All that is basically is I, I put these in a pan with some oil, heated them up over medium heat until they got a little bit bulled in. Um, you don't have to do that, but because sockeye cooks so quickly in an air fryer, I find that it doesn't get to become that really nice golden color that I want when I'm looking at uh, like a crispy fish stick. So I like using pre-toasted um, panko breadcrumbs in this case. Um, first thing I'm gonna do after that, the fish has been patted dry, that's very important. I'm also going to season the fish itself. Um, I know some people season the flour, but I think this gives you a little more control over how much salt is actually taking to the fish since you don't really know how much flour it's gonna pick up. So I'm gonna coat these all around with flour, just like that. Um, and this will probably get a little messy because you're gonna be dipping it now into your wet ingredient and that is a whisked egg. So let's put these guys in here. Um, give these a little turn all around. And the only thing left to do after that is put them into the breadcrumbs. They don't need to be dripping with egg, but just have them coated pretty nicely here. All right, so I'm definitely gonna have to wash my hands after this because my fingers are now basically turning into a fish stick. Um, all right, we've got a good coating. It's okay if there's like a little bit of flour showing right there, not a big deal. Um, but try to get as much of that bread come on there as you can. You can press it on gently. You don't need to smash it onto the fish. It should do a pretty good job sticking it on its own. Um, all right, so now this, this is where I get to wash my hands because my fingers are breaded. And I'm gonna preheat my air fryer for just a moment here. Um, I meant to do that earlier, but um, if you were doing this gluten-free, you could do a coconut flour and something like um, either gluten-free breadcrumbs. Um, you could do coconut, uh, like coconut, um, shredded coconut. That's the word I'm looking for. Actually, I have, I'm gonna drop a link into the, chat because it's a little bit different if you're using coconut I think I haven't tried this one with an air fryer but um, I know someone in the chat had mentioned um, using pollock for um, pollock and like coconut uh, to make something crispy like this but I would follow the recipe that I just dropped in the chat if you want to do that so anywho um, you can also just use not a, not as a gluten-free option you can use regular breadcrumbs I just think that these are really nice because they're coarse and they're already crunchy. Um, like I said, these look nice and toasty already because I pre-toasted them, but even if you just have them untoasted like this, they're going to be crunchy and crispy pretty much right out of the container. So all right, while 
that air fryer is preheating. Let me just set these aside. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the wing pod here, except my station up again. So I'm going to cut the wing pod. So when I cut the salmon, I cut it like this way, I guess like vertically with the grain. I'm gonna cut it against the grain just to be con contrary in here. Um, so link cod, if you're not familiar with it, it's very, like, I, I kind of use it in place of halibut. If you love halibut, you're going to love link cod. Um, it's just like a little bit more delicate in texture, I would say. Um, I found a little pin bone. Let's pull that out here. Um, and it's, I think, a really, like, a nicer texture than just Pacific cod, which Pacific cod is great. It's more like a workhorse. This is, like, delicate um, but like not so precious that I wouldn't make it into a fish stick. So uh, we're gonna do the same process for if I'm cooking ling cod. And these I'm gonna cook in a pan on the stove top here in a minute. So again, just like salting these a little bit, coating them in flour. I'm sure some of you have done this before and it's one of my favorite things to do with fish. Um, I think I do this with fish more than with any other protein. There's just something about a crispy coating and like a flaky, like a really flaky thing in the middle that is really, really nice. Um, so let's drop this into the panko. Get myself some space to work here. All right. We've got these. Get these nice and coated as well. Um, if you are, if you have time, you can always let these rest in the fridge. You know, you don't have to cook these up right away. The longer they sit in the fridge, the more the breadcrumbs are going to stick to everything. But honestly, I think that step is very skippable and I kind of want to eat these immediately. I don't want to wait. All right, let me move this stuff because I'm done with it. And again, going to wash my fingers really quickly. All right. Um, so now we've got our fish prepped. We've got sockeye salmon, ling cod. I'm going to put these into my air fryer basket. Um, if I think it's going to be hot enough right now. I'm just going to drop these in here. You could spray your basket if you like, but the breadcrumbs I'm using are already a little bit oiled. So I'm not really going to worry so much about the sticking to um the basket here there we go and just um because i didn't mention it before my air fryer is heated to 400 degrees so that's like the highest setting on my air fryer and that should be a good um setting for your appliance too if you have that um and of course if you don't have an air fryer this is what you are going to do um Actually, I'm gonna just keep an eye on the clock. Sockeye salmon in the air fryer will probably take about six minutes to cook. So um, I'm just gonna keep an eye on that. Whenever it's 3.24 Eastern time, I'll hopefully remember to check on the fish. Um, I know I have a dial on here, but I don't have a digital setting on my air fryer. So, um, all right, in the meantime, We've got a skillet that is big enough to fit all of my ling cod. Um, I'm just doing one filet right now, so this is plenty of space. If you are cooking a lot of fish, making a lot of fish sticks, um, you'll want to do this probably in batches so that you have enough space for the fish to get nice and crispy. Um, if it's too crowded in the pan, there's always a chance that it'll end up steaming a little bit, which will definitely inhibit the crisp factor. So um, let me go ahead and add some just like neutral oil to the pan and let this heat up. Um, in the meantime, um, what I can show you, well, actually in the meantime, does anyone have any questions about anything uh, so far? Yes, Kat, there was one question. If you put any seasoning in the flour at all, um, I didn't, but 
you absolutely can add a little bit a little bit of spice to the flour. Like sometimes I like putting a little bit of cayenne um, in there. Uh, something like garlic powder will just give it like a really nice sort of like savory extra flavor. Um, I'm making a sauce for this, so I'm not even bothering seasoning the flour because I'm going to have like a really nice um dipping sauce to accompany the fish sticks but yeah any sort of dry spice um or dry seasoning can go into the breadcrumbs themselves so you know even if you're if the breadcrumbs that you have in your your pantry cabinet right now they might be seasoned breadcrumbs totally fine to use it's just going to add more flavor to the fish stick okay. any other questions while we're waiting for this oil to heat up can you skip the flour dredge? Sorry? Oh, can you skip the flour? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, I would say if you're skipping the flour, um, it's more skippable if you're using an air fryer. If you're cooking it in a pan like this, I think it's nice to have some sort of flour on there that helps the egg, um, the egg and breadcrumbs bind to it. But it should still work uh, fine. It just makes it like cohere or adhere a little bit better, um, especially when you're cooking it um, in a pan. If you're cooking something in an air fryer, you're not really moving it that much. So you're less likely to end up losing a bunch of uh, the coating along, along the way. But um, I believe we actually do have a recipe on the blog for fish sticks that just dips the, it might even be for lingcod, just dips the lingcod in egg and then breadcrumbs and then puts it in an air fryer. So yeah, skippable. I like it. I think it's an extra, you know, an extra step that is worth doing, but um, totally up to you. Okay, I've got a couple more minutes on my air fryer, but I think this oil looks like it's probably hot. You can see it's a little bit shimmery. So um, I just have oil over medium heat. We're not doing a deep fry here, so it's just enough to cover the surface of the pan. And if I'm if I've waited long enough, I should hear a sizzle right away, which you can't hear, but I can. So <laughs> I've got a good sizzle going. You can kind of maybe see some bubbles if my resolution here on Zoom is good enough. So lingcod is going to take a little more time to cook than salmon, but um, than sockeye or coho salmon that is. Um, but we're going to do like maybe a minute or two per side until they're nice and golden all around. Um, let's see here. So while this is going, let me do more multitasking. I'm cooking multiple things at once here. Um, I'm going to show you how to make the dipping sauce for this. So this is something that I'm making exactly as the recipe is written. Um, it's going to become an like a really delicious sesame mayo or like a sesame dipping sauce. Um, so right now I have um, just like a quarter cup of mayo. I like using a Japanese mayo, it's called Kewpie mayo, but you can totally use regular mayo. I think it just has like a really nice flavor if you can get your hands on it. So that is the base of this sauce. And to this, I'm gonna add a teaspoon and a half of sesame oil. Um, for some reason, I have all these little tiny jars with me here. Um, that's about a teaspoon and a half. Do not have to be exact here because it's just sauce. You can always adjust the measurements of this. Uh, and then we're going to do a teaspoon and a half of soy sauce. Or if you're doing a gluten-free version of this, you can do uh, like a make sure it's a gluten-free tamari, um, which is very similar. And let's see, I have maple syrup is going to give this a really nice, well-rounded like sweetness. Um, so let's do a teaspoon and a half of that. I think before I add anything else, let me go ahead and flip this one way. All right, you can see that's getting nice and golden. So that's when you know it's ready to flip. As for my air fryer, check these out. Let me make sure I'm lining this up on my camera. Oh, there we go. So these are the salmon fish sticks. They are perfectly golden. They should be done and cooked through. I can kind of see on the edge here that the 
salmon is nice and opaque. Oh, you really can't see that well in here, but yeah, there you go, little focus. So I'm gonna move these to a plate just so that I have um, these out of this hot, hot basket. All right. So we've got one batch of fish sticks ready to eat. I'm gonna leave these aside for now. Um, as I was saying, so we're making a dipping sauce for this right now. Um, the final ingredient to this is optional, but delicious. So um, what I'm gonna add to this is something called burikake. It's a Japanese style, like seaweed, sesame seed ingredient blend. It's basically just like a, a really fun dry seasoning um, that you can just like use to top the rice bowl. You can add it to like any time you're making even like a, just like cooking up a filet of salmon and want, want to sprinkle something special on top. However, if you cannot find this, if you have no idea what it is, if you don't even want to buy it, totally fine. You can use plain sesame seeds, white, black, doesn't matter. It'll just add a little bit of extra flavor and, um, you know, let me point it that way, a little extra flavor and crunch to the sauce. But because I do like burikake and I have it, let me just go ahead and add it right now. Um, all right, these are looking pretty good. I'm gonna have, have one more side on this piece to brown up. If your fish looks like it's getting too brown too quickly, you can always adjust the heat as you're cooking it. Um, you know, it depends on how how even your oven heats, your stove top heats, and evenly your pan cooks. Um, you might need to like move things around and, and adjust while you're going. So, okay, back to the sauce. So yeah, I've got all these ingredients and then I'm just gonna mix them together. And it's going to become a nice cohesive, delicious thing that I can dip either of these fish sticks into. Um, I think it's just like a fun way to make mayo more interesting. You know, that was pretty much, I think ingredients that most people have in their cabinets. If you don't have, um, you know, soy sauce, that's okay. You can just do maybe a little bit of the sesame oil and give it a really nice flavor. If you don't have sesame oil, um, but you do have soy sauce, then that really, even just that addition helps. So um, let me give this a little taste. It tastes good to me. A lot of flavor. Um, I'm gonna take this fish stick off. In my pan, you can see I'm getting some of these little black pieces. That's because my pan is getting too hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. This fish stick is a little pale, so I'm gonna leave it on for a little bit longer. I'm not sure why this guy didn't get so much love, but um, in the meantime, check out my bowl of fish sticks. This is something that you know you can serve for like a really fun lunch, a really nice snack. Just if you feel like snacking on fish in the afternoon with like a nice beverage. Um, really easy, and I think it's time for me to take a taste of this. Uh, if you want to switch to the other camera, since my pan is getting hot and smoky here, um, I'm just going to set this off to the side. It'll finish cooking in the pan um, if I take it off the heat. So yeah, delicious fish sticks and the moment of truth. Let's dip in this one. All right, this is the sockeye salmon. Mmm. Perfectly flaky. And just like really, really flavorful. The sauce is awesome. I highly recommend making it with as many ingredients as you can that match up with the list because like I was saying earlier with the flour, you don't really need to season the flour because this has so so much flavor in it and it's like kind of addictive. So um, that is all it takes to make fish sticks. Um, any questions about what I did there? Those look great, Kat. And yes, we have one on how do you know when the fish is done? So when you're cooking fish this way, generally the fish is gonna be done when the coating is golden. Um, that's because 
you're cutting it into pieces that are small enough that the fish can cook through pretty quickly, um, especially something like wild salmon, like wild sockeye or wild coho. Um, you know, like I would say that if you're ever making something like fish cakes or putting fish in a coating like this, it's probably two or three minutes aside, if not a little bit less. And that's just happens to be the perfect timing for this fish. Um, I have that other sort of like sad looking fit, uh, fish stick over there with wing cod. I cut that one a little bit thicker. So I'm just letting that finish up on the pan, but also sort of same story. Like whenever the fish is golden, that's generally when you know it's gonna be done. Um, and you know, you can always just break into it. And if it flakes really easily, then it's done. Of course, then you have a broken fish stick and you know, you ruin the whole mystique of the plate, but that's like sure far away to figure out if the fish is done or not. Um, let me break into one of these ling cod pieces as well. So same story. If you do want to just pop it open, it should flake really easily and nicely. Um, ling cod or halibut or Pacific cod, those should all be nice and like opaque in the center. Um, they should just be opaque. Um, if you cook it a little longer than that, um, it'll probably get a little bit tough, but the breadcrumb coating will sort of protect it from the heat and prevent it from becoming like a really tough, dry piece of fish. Um, and again, when it's golden, it's probably done. So um, has anyone here ever had ling cod before? I'm curious how many of you um, have already tried some of this or have any in your freezer or are interested in it? Because um, I just want to say, I didn't get to talk about it so much, but um, you know, I mentioned ling cod, is awesome if you love Pacific halibut, especially. I think that they're really interchangeable in a lot of recipes. So if um, you know if you end up adding this as a member special to your next box, um, we have a few recipes that are specifically written for ling cod on the recipe blog. However, almost any recipe that's written for halibut fillets, you can use ling cod with it. Um, it's just going to be a little more delicate um, and. Am I frozen here? Hang on. I think my, oh, it looks like I was frozen for a second. Um, so definitely um, check out the member special. Um, we can drop the link again in the chat. Um, I don't know if you read the newsletter last week that Monica wrote, but it's basically like the fish that seafood insiders get really excited about. Um, she was at a restaurant once um, with a bunch of seafood insiders and they saw Ling caught in the menu and they all knew that that was what they wanted to order. So um, that makes it sound really cool, right? Um, it's not a lie, it's delicious. So definitely consider adding that to your box. Um, and I guess to wrap up, if we don't have any more questions, um, anything else, Sunana? Um, that was it with questions. All okay, great. Thank well, um, if you are a member, Ling Cod, if you're not a member yet, um, we've got a special offer for you. If you become a member today and use the code LIVE25, you'll get $25 off your first amazing box of fish from Wild Alaskan Company, and you get access to exclusive member specials like Ling Cod. I'm going to say it a million times because I love this fish so much. Um, so you can sign up at Wild Alaskan Company's homepage, which is wildalaskancompany.com. Very easy to remember. Um, and for everyone, member or not, I hope you join me again next week because I'm going to show you how easy it is to build a great sheet pan meal with veggies, fish, and lots of flavor. So sauces, seasonings galore. Um, well, actually just two, cause that's all I have time to make, but it should give you some great inspiration for, um, how to enjoy the abundance of fall vegetables that are at the markets now with whatever fish you have in your freezer right now. So, um, feel free to join me next week for that. I would love to see you there. Um, uh, and I guess that's it. Thank you everyone for your time. And as always live wild. <laughs>